I love having a problem that um, perhaps no one's ever solved before and, and bringing together different people with different expertise um, to try to go forward rather than stagnating. Lucy from Auckland asks, why do we commonly see the sea receding prior to large waves happening with a tsunami? That's a great question, Lucy, and it's a question we often get asked. If you think about a tsunami as being a wave like you might see on a, um, a string that you move up and down, or you might see on a, a calm pond when ripples propagate out from throwing a rock, you know that the wave has crests and troughs, crests and troughs and crests and troughs. So when you see the water go out first, it means that trough is arriving at the coastline first. Why would this happen? When, when we make a tsunami from an earthquake, or when a tsunami is made from an earthquake, it's made because you have places on the seafloor that either rise, creating a big column of water that then smashes down and spreads out, or drops, creating a trough in the water that then spreads out um, and goes out like a propagating tsunami or moving tsunami. Um, a lot of tsunamis are caused by both of these motions where you get uplift and subsidence from the same earthquake. Some are caused purely from uplift, some are caused purely from subsidence. So you can imagine if the part of the, the wave that hits you first is caused by that down dropping portion, you'll get a receding of the ocean. Great question, Lucy. Um, I, I hope that answers your question and I hope now you understand that sometimes we get some a wave rise, a wave drop before the, the big tsunami waves come on. But what's absolutely crucial is that anyone, if they do see some sort of abnormal activity in the ocean like this, if you see the water recede for a long way out, you need to treat that as a possible tsunami coming in and you need to evacuate accordingly. Thank you very much.